So this week we're all at home practicing social distancing because of the coronavirus. And so I'm making this session for some groups of people that I normally provide a community class to in their congregations. And I wanna make it available to um, pretty much everyone. So um, it's the season of Lent and we've been following along with the Roswell Presbyterian Church sermon series. And right now it's called Looking for Resurrection. And so the whole context of these classes is the natural pattern of life, which is life, death, and resurrection, kind of over and over again. As Richard Rohr says, um, it's not just, when we talk about death, it's not just a physical death. Every time life doesn't go the way we planned or we hit rock bottom, we're having to find ways to surrender to something bigger than ourselves. And so this is an opportunity in our yoga practice uh, to see what that's like. So it's letting go of not only your expectations, but also um, letting go of any judgment about ourselves, what we can and can't do, and about others, and also letting go of our own ego, right? So dying to that small self. Um, in terms of the practice, like if you think about it, you get ready to start moving and you thought you could touch your toes and all of a sudden you can't touch your toes, well, you just let that expectation go and uh, have no judgment about it, just keep practicing. Um, in, a, in the space that we're in now, mostly staying home, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, oh, these people, my family, they're driving me crazy, I can't work in this space. And maybe it's an opportunity to focus less on ourselves and our own needs and more on the needs of those around us being compassionate. Um, another way we might think about it is, you know, I feel like I don't have anything to learn from a story in the Bible, but in fact, um, the stories are really pretty applicable. For instance, Pontius Pilate, we got from that that he wasn't telling the truth. Like, it was his responsibility and he didn't take responsibility for it. Um, that's called in uh, yoga the practice of satya, truth telling. Then we looked at Barnabas, who was basically stealing. You know, he was uh, choosing to take the um, treatment of an innocent person, which he wasn't, right? He was, Jesus was innocent, Barnabas wasn't. And so that's really stealing. So asteya, that's another yoga practice, non-stealing. And so we can relate all these things um, to ourselves and this time and just see where it takes us. Remember, it's a practice. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna do some poses that require a lot of paying attention. Uh, some poses with some cross body things and just lots of energy lines. In fact, they're also good for um, building strong bones so a good uh, bone building practice as well. You're gonna to wanna to have some props, maybe a block. You don't need really a yoga block. You could have a, um, a couple of hardback books taped together. Maybe um, your, a blanket and a, a tie. I'm not sure we'll use the tie. So um, this is gonna be about a 45 minute to an hour practice. And if you're thinking to yourself, I've got more important things to do, um, why would I want to spend time staring at a candle? Well, this is a great opportunity to just be in the moment, right? And let go of any expectations that you have about what's going to happen. So I'm going to start sitting in a chair. When you practice in a chair, um, you uh, want to be sure that it's on a uh, stable surface. So all four legs on a yoga mat or maybe a, um, on a carpet, right? Just not on a slippery floor. We're always gonna start with a little bit of centering and stillness and end that way. And the stillness at the end is like the most important part. You'll get the most out of the practice. So if you um, choose to or need to end the practice early, I encourage you to sit or lay in stillness. So go ahead and sit up tall, your back away from the back of the chair, your feet rooted on the ground, your eyes closed and simply start to pay attention to your breath, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. So as a practice of paying attention, we'll do some body scans throughout the practice. So starting with your feet, maybe lift your toes and spread them wide and then put them down again and notice how that energizes the bottoms of your feet, your arches. If you put a little more weight in your heels, you'll feel how that firms up the calves and activates the legs. So if you kind of try to lengthen your low back, drop your tailbone, you might feel how that rotates your inner thighs slightly. 
And then take your shoulders up to your ears and roll them back and just drop them down. Lean into the back side of your body just a little bit. So the back side of your body feels like a waterfall. The muscles of the neck and the shoulders just dripping towards the waist. Make sure his chin's level. And then just come right back to the breath. So as you pay attention to the breath and your mind starts to settle, perhaps thinking of some quality to cultivate. So not only for yourself, but so that you can be your best caring for those around you. Maybe it's empathy and compassion. Maybe it's patience. Nothing ever goes as expected, or often doesn't. Just letting go of that and being in the moment. So once you set your intention, let it go. Check in with your feet again, make sure they're still rooted, float your eyes open, and we'll get moving. So I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see my spine. Always moving the spine first, right? So on an inhale, start to lift your chest. Maybe raise your gaze, keep the shoulders sliding down. And then on your exhale, start from the base of the spine and hollow out, curving under. Keep the feet rooted. Maybe the head drops. We're gonna do that a few more times. So inhaling, start from the pelvis. Tilt forward, lift the chest, arch. And exhaling, hollowing out. So involving the hands, maybe pushing on the thighs to lift your chest a little more. And as you roll under, extending your arms and pulling back one more time. And then we'll just keep moving, right? The spine in all six directions. So take one arm way up to the sky. Get really, really tall on your inhale. And as you exhale, fold over to the side. So keep that low belly pulling in. It might be easiest to gaze down. You might look forward. You might challenge yourself by drawing the upper shoulder way back, going a little deeper, gazing at your fingertips. Remember, you're your own best teacher. Inhaling, come on back up to center. So it shouldn't be any pain. So on the inhales, in general, we're always going to be getting taller, right? And on the exhales, we'll be going deeper. So taking it a breath at a time. Root that opposite hip. Maybe go a little deeper. And inhaling, come on back up. And exhale, check in with your feet again. Inhale, get really, really tall. And we're going to twist to one side so you could rest your hand on the outside of the thigh. Use mostly your back muscles in this twist, all right? Not so much your arms. Shoulders level. And exhale and release. Inhale, get tall again. And we'll go to the other side. So using mostly the back. Just supporting yourself with your arms. And then inhaling, come on back to center. So we've moved our spine in all six directions, right? And we're gonna get to be moving a little bit more. So if at any time you want to not use the chair and get on the mat fully, feel free, right? And, so, and just know that we're, that we're all about making shapes um, just so if you need to stay in the chair, find a way to um, help your body get in the shape. So I'm going to take one foot forward on the chair, holding on for stability if you need. Well, that didn't go as I expected. That was uh, Tom fixing the fire alarms. So that's okay. We're going to take a breath and we're just going to move on. So I'm going to take one leg, holding on if necessary. I can scoop my other foot back. And so basically I'm just bringing the floor to me, right? So being careful you don't flip your chair, 
You could be on one knee in a high lunge. All right, so just lifting the chest. It feels like a little more of a back bend. You can see that curve. And on an exhale, I'm going to pull my low belly and draw my toes toward my knee and do a gentle forward fold. We're going to do that two more times, inhaling, gently arch. And exhaling, pulling back. And one more time, inhaling, gently arch. And exhaling, pulling back. All right. So let's just see what it feels like to twist with one leg up. If you're, if you're stable, you could always do it with one hand on the chair, right? We're going to twist toward that front leg. We're pulling the elbows down like a goal post. Pull that low belly in. Use your inner thighs. And come on back up. And release. And we'll go right to the other side. So again, positioning my feet so I'm nice and stable. And inhaling. Getting that little bit of a back bend. And exhaling, draw the toes back and fold forward. Do that two more times. And exhaling. One more time. Inhaling. And exhaling. Come on back. Make sure you're nice and stable. And I'm going to twist the other way. So I'm pulling my inner thighs toward one another. Pull my low belly in. And keep my arms on the back. And come on back up. And release. I'm going to move the chair. But you do what's right for you. So we're going to try that same, uh, some of those same motions, but standing. All right, so you're going to inhale, take your fingertips up. On an exhale, lift one knee. So find one place to rest, rest your gaze. That's going to help you balance. Draw your elbows down in a cactus pose. And then rotate your body toward that leg. And gently release. Bring your hands to your heart center. Inhaling up. Use your focus. What are you paying attention to? And twist. And exhaling. Come on back up. And bring your hands to your heart center. So it's never too soon to come back to that intention that you set. Maybe close your eyes. Notice how your body feels. And we'll get moving with some sun salutations. So remember, you can always use the chair or the wall to bring the floor closer to you. Inhaling, arms to the sky. Exhaling, soften the knees and fold yourself forward. So grab hold of a block. They make the arm longer. You could always use the block to help you, right? Inhaling, we're going to come halfway up. And exhaling, we're going to take the left leg way back in high lunge. So key alignment, knee over the ankle. Don't want to get your knee forward of your toes. Take a breath here and then float the back knee down. We're going to inhale, arms to the sky. Take a breath. And then exhale, hands to the mat. Bring your front leg to meet your back. So my uh, hips are going to be in front of my knees here. So I can squeeze my elbows in and exhale down to the mat. Try and keep my hips up till last. And then float the hips down. And as you do, push the tops of the feet into the mat. Safe back bends, three small cobras. Just drop the elbows and use your back muscles to lift your chest. And exhale. Move with your breath. Inhale. And exhale. One more. And exhale. Slide your hands a little closer to your waist. Squeeze your elbows in. See if you can get your hips up first. Keeping that low belly pulled in, take your knees a little bit wider and put your big toes together. And we take ourselves back to a child's pose. So you might want to use your hands to push your hips further back and rock a little bit from side to side. And then bring your forehead to the mat if you're able. Or grab hold of a block and put your head on a block. Soften where you can.
Good, inhaling, come on back up. So we're gonna take that left leg back in the air again and do some of that cross body stuff. So first pull your knees toward your nose, knee toward your nose and just hollow out. And then inhale, heel out. And on exhale, go across the body. And then inhale, open up to the other elbow. And then exhale, go across the body. And inhale, lift the heel. And then put the foot down behind you across your uh, right side and you're gonna look forward, get longer. And then as you exhale, look over your shoulder at your foot, push out through the heel. The whole side body's getting long again. And then inhale, lift the heel. Exhale, put it down. So we're gonna bring that, bring that right leg forward so we're just working the one side, right? Back into that high lunge. Use the block if it's helpful. Scoot the back foot forward. Hanging like a rag doll. Inhale halfway up. Exhaling, soften. Reverse your dive. Fingertips to the sky. And exhale your hands to your heart. We'll keep moving with the breath. Inhaling, arms up. Softening, exhaling, dive. Inhale halfway up. And now the right side. Right leg goes back in high lunge. Knee over the ankle, float the knee down. Pull that low belly in and drop the tailbone. Exhaling, release. Inhaling onto the knees. Exhaling, chin and chest and then hips to the mat. This time we're gonna give ourselves a little more space. So fingertips slightly forward and wider than the shoulders. Using your legs, inhaling, lift your chest. Maybe push into your hands a little. You might get a nice stretch in the front belly of the ribs. The thoracic spine is the one. Bending, not the low back. Two more times, inhaling. And exhaling. One more time, inhaling. And exhaling. Keeping our hands Right by our ribs, squeeze your elbows in, lift your hips. You can see that my hips are still in front of my knees. If I curl my toes under, that positions me to lift my hips up and then way back for a downward dog. So a little body scan here, checking in, fingers and feet, fingers spread wide, upper arms pulling toward the back, which are the ears, heels dropping down, thighs rotating in, and the head is just hanging between the upper arms. One more breath. And then we'll float those knees down again. Bring your hands back onto your shoulders and we'll do this cross body core on the other side. So inhale, take your right heel out and exhale, knee to nose. Then inhale, heel out and cross the body and touch the other elbow if you can, and come cross the body again, and then heel out, cross it over behind you, get really, really long, and then easily gaze over your shoulder at your foot. Inhaling, lift, exhaling, go ahead and put it down, Maybe rock the hips from side to side. And then we'll bring that left foot forward, lifting the heel, nice long lunge. And then finish the flow, hang, hang, hang like a rag doll. Inhale, come halfway up. Exhaling, fold. Reverse the dive, arms to the sky. And exhaling your hands to your heart. And we'll do another one-legged balance. So tree pose, you can always go to the wall or hold on to the wall. So many options on where to put your foot, right? You could put it right into the calf. You could put it above the knee, just no weight in the knee. You could bring it all the way up to the inner thigh. You just want to get all your weight on one leg, even if you're holding onto the wall, that's going to build bone. Use your focal point and then grow your tree. 
Do a little body scan. Push into the floor. Firm up the legs. Drop the shoulder blades down. Soften the jaw. Reach the fingertips toward the ceiling. And exhaling, release and take a breath. When you're ready, we'll go to the other side. So trying to do the same thing on one side as the other. Self-correct on your own little body scan, starting at the feet and working your way up. One more deep breath. And exhaling, release. Beautiful. So we'll flow again. Just want to keep moving. Inhaling arms to the sky. Exhaling, fold. Inhaling halfway up. Exhaling. Left leg way back again. Inhaling, bring the right leg to meet it. Floating down to your knees or staying on your toes. Exhaling, chaturanga. Inhaling to up dog or cobra again. So up dog, you're squeezing the mat with your fingertips. Again, want to try and make this, the upper spine bending more. And then right away, we'll exhale to down dog. This time we're going to bring the left leg forward. Get that high lunge on the other side. Come all the way to halfway up. Exhaling, fold. Reverse your dive, inhaling arms to the sky. And exhaling your hands to your heart. Next, we're going to go to warrior two. So you're going to take your feet spread really, really wide. Toes are pointing toward the long edge of your mat. Maybe you're so wide that your uh, ankles are right under your fingertips or your wrists. And then you're going to turn your left toes out. If you drew a line down your mat, the heel and the arch would intersect. Then look down at your left big toe, and as you exhale, take the knee right over the middle toe so you can still see your big toe. So the knee's going to the back side of the body. So I want to get nice and deep. Eventually, maybe the thigh would get parallel to the ground. And again, doing a body scan, pushing into the outer edge of the right foot, right? It's going to protect the knee. Dropping the tailbone, pulling the baby ribs in right here. Shoulders are right over the hips, so we're a rectangle. We're not a parallelogram. Energy out through both arms, and the triceps are really squeezing onto the bones. One more deep breath. And inhaling, come on back up. We'll go right to the other side. So toes forward, and then right toes out. Knee over the middle of the foot. All right, let's see if you can go deep. And once you get there, do that body scan starting from the feet and self-correct. So we challenge ourselves to stay, use the breath, maybe go a little deeper. Notice where your mind goes if it wanders. There's our opportunity for growth and transformation. Nice. And inhaling, go ahead and turn those toes in and we'll heel toe our way back. And another set of sun salutations. So inhaling arms to the sky, exhaling soften. Inhale halfway up, exhaling fold. Left leg back in high lunge. 
We're gonna come back to the top of a push-up, right leg to meet it. Let's do that cross-body core on our hands. You could always drop to your knees like we did the first time. Left heel up, exhale, knee to nose, heel up, knee across body, knee open, knee across, heel out. Go ahead and put your foot down, float your knees down, and take a little child's pose. Just let that belly relax. Come back to your breath. And inhaling, come on back up. We'll do the other side. So back in your plank. Remember, you could do this whole thing in a chair. Just pull your knee up toward your chest and release it. And then pull your knee toward one shoulder and then the other shoulder and then back across the body and release it. Float the foot down and take a downward dog or make that shape however you can. A couple of breaths here. And inhaling, look at your thumbs. Exhaling, bend your knees and walk your feet to meet your hands. Inhale, halfway up. Exhaling, fold. Reverse the dive, arms to the sky. And exhale your hands to your heart. Okay, so this next pose, I'm gonna definitely use a block. You could use the chair. If you're super, super flexible, you might not need it. So this is revolve triangle. Again, one of those poses that requires a tremendous amount of attention. And so that's where we get all the benefits, all right? This is gonna be flexibility, balance, strength. So I've got my hips facing the short edge of the mat. And if you looked at my heels, they're not on the center line. They're away, you know, about this much so that you have a base, all right? Leave that balance beam free. I'm going to hold the block in the hand of my, I'm going to switch my feet in the hand of my front foot. All right. I want the whole back side of the body to get nice and long and then pull that low belly in and with a flat back fold forward and put the block down. So if you can't uh, reach the block, maybe you rest your hand on your thigh or you use a chair instead. So I extend the spine out really, really long, pull the low belly in and start to corkscrew the spine around itself, pulling back in the hips and reaching forward through the crown of the head, and then taking the opposite arm to the sky. So we don't want to do this. You can see that my, uh, the head of my humerus, my arm bone, is exposed there. Keep the arm on the back. All right. I'm checking in with my feet, making sure they're rooted, using my inner thighs and my low belly. Relaxing where I can. One more deep breath. And exhaling, I'm going to come out of it the same way I went into it. I'm going to soften that front knee for balance. Pull the low belly in. Come up with a flat back. And then I'll turn myself around so I can still see you. Got that space for my heels, four inches or so. I'm going to lengthen the back side of my body and come forward with a flat back. I start to pay attention to my hips, pulling the left hip back, right hip forward, and then start to corkscrew around myself. And then take the other arm to the sky and start that body scan. Maybe staying light in the block. Come back to your breath. Go a little deeper on an exhale. And then gently release and come out of it. Slowly and safely. Beautiful. So super challenging pose, lots of benefits there. Let's go back to our sun salutations. 
inhaling arms up exhaling soften inhale halfway up so always know that you can make some pose more vigorous or go deeper left leg back and high lunge right float that knee down inhaling you can stay on your toes exhaling chaturanga inhaling cobra or up dog exhaling forehead to the mat squeeze your elbows in and wherever you were come to a child's pose great opportunity to check in with your body return to that intention that you set a couple of breaths Inhale and come out of your child's pose and bring yourself to a downward dog. Lift that left leg to the sky and then pull it forward. Now you're in high lunge on the other side, right? Come to a half forward fold. Nice and long. Exhaling, soften. Inhaling, arms to the sky. And exhaling, hands to the heart. And one more. Move with your breath. Exhaling, dive. Half forward fold, extending. This time the right leg goes back in high lunge. Left one comes to meet it. So either on the knees or the toes, exhaling chaturanga, inhaling cobra or up dog. This time we'll go right to downward dog. Take a breath. And then inhaling, take your right leg to the sky. Exhale, pull it forward. High lunge. Reach the crown of the head long. Half forward fold. Exhaling, soften. And inhaling, arms to the sky. Exhaling, hands to your heart. And we're going to come down to the mat. So doing that safely, right? And we'll come to seated. So we're going to do a seated twist. Uh, I'm going to do it with my knee bent. You could always do it with your foot extended out. And then I'm going to cross over. And in the same way that we were paid attention to our feet is the foundation. That's true here, too. You want to push your foot into the mat, even like you were going to stand up on it, right? This foot is just heels resting outside the hip, and the hips are both grounded. And then you're going to inhale and make one side really, really tall. And as you exhale, use the muscles of your back to twist. So maybe you get your forearm to the outside, or maybe you hold on, right? And then inhale, get tall, and exhale, deepen. So keep using the muscles of your back. Even here, you can be working your inner thigh like you're pulling the, this inner thigh closer to your ribs. A couple of breaths. Soften the bottom foot. You don't need it. Keep the top foot firm, shoulders level. Find one place to rest your gaze. Inhaling, gently release. So we never want to miss an opportunity to do a little core work. Rest your fingertips behind you. Lean into them so you're resting on the back of your hips. You should lift your chest. So if you're able to lift your shins, maybe it's just one shin at a time. Maybe you need to keep your legs on the feet on the ground. Maybe you can reach your fingertips forward. Use your inner thighs. One more breath, lift your chest. And then we'll go to the other side. So I'm going to have my left knee forward. You can, again, have your foot reaching out straight. Make sure that this top foot is your foundation. Drop your hips. Lengthen your spine. And then as you twist, use the back muscles, right? Find one place to rest your gaze and work on deepening.
do your body scan, notice what you're paying attention to, try to be fully present. And exhaling, gently release. Good, we're gonna roll ourselves down onto our back. When you get there, have your feet about hip width apart, tuck your shoulder blades together, and take a couple breaths. Good, so we're gonna do an eagle pose. I love this pose because you can do it laying on your back, you can do it in the chair, you can do it standing on one leg as a balance. But today we're gonna draw the left knee toward the chest, cross it over the right thigh. Keep one pull close to the chest. You could let your feet hang free, or you could work on wrapping your shin around your, your ankle around your shin. So much easier when we're laying on our back than standing. And then take your arms out to the side. So in Eagle Pose or Garudasana, the um, elbow and the thigh are always closest to each other. So then we tuck the other one in. And again, you could let the arms hang free, like you're giving yourself a hug or you could work on double wrapping the forearms. So get the back of the neck long and just compress all the joints into the center of the body. On an inhale, take your elbows up over your forehead. Make it a nice shoulder stretch. And exhale, pull them back toward your knees. And again, inhale, elbows up. And exhale, pull them back toward your knees. And then squeeze all the joints, lengthen the back of the neck again. Squeeze a little harder. And then release. And feel all that blood flow back into the joints and all that energy being released. And when you're ready, we'll go to the other side. So we'll bring the right knee up. Cross it over the left thigh. Decide if you want to wrap your foot around the shin. And then take the right elbow, tuck the left elbow in, and maybe you let it release, or maybe you double wrap. Again, realigning the neck. On an inhale, elbows up. Exhaling, pull the knees and elbows together. Inhaling, elbows up. Exhale, pull in, and squeeze. And gently release. Again, taking a breath, just to let that go. So one more pose, gentle back bend. This is also really great for building bone. You want to tuck your heels close to your hips, maybe even touch them with your fingertips. All right, so maybe we'll start today pushing the elbows into the mat so you can really feel that the, um, action of the back muscles. And check in with your feet. Remember, they're your foundation. Push all 10 toes into the mat, especially the big toe. And then inhale, lift your hips. All right, so maybe we tuck our shoulder blades a little closer to each other. Think about your inner thighs. Keep them active. And maybe we want to take our hands underneath us, tucking our shoulder blades together even more so that we can lift the thoracic spine, the ribs. And then check in, do your little body scan start at the feet. Are they still grounded? Are the knees reaching over your toes? That's the way the energy wants to go here. Inner thighs rotating slightly inward. Hips up. Neck soft. Gaze soft. One more deep inhale. Maybe we go a little higher. And then exhaling, releasing the hands and dropping the hips. And take the arms out to the side, palms facing down this time, and walk the feet to the edges of the mat. And just windshield wipe your feet from side to side.
So we're getting ready to settle into Shavasana. Most important pose of all, right? So bring your heels slightly away from your uh, hips. So a little bit wider than hips. I'm actually going to grab a blanket to help support my neck. Right? So if you're able to straighten your legs out, that's great. Um, if not, you can keep your knees bent. So my toes are flopped open. I'm going to tuck my shoulder blades together again. Bring my hands away from my body slightly and let the palms face up again. Receiving and sharing all that great energy you've created in your body. Somehow, by some mystery, even though we are separated, we're all in this together. So one last time, recall that intention that you set, trusting that it's been accomplished. And then let it go and just follow your breath. Thoughts will come, let them float by like clouds. No more work until you hear my voice again. Slowly and gently bring your attention back to your body. Before you begin moving, feel how you are completely supported by the ground underneath you. Holding on to that feeling, knowing that even when things don't go as planned, we can surrender to that larger power. Trusting the spirit within us. 
And then start to move your fingers and your toes so we're getting moving in the opposite direction of the spine. We start drawing the motions in toward the spine as they get bigger elbows and knees. So there's no right way to get moving. Just do it gently and safely for you. You're going to eventually want to draw your knees and your chest and push yourself up to seated. And when you get there, I'm going to invite you to stay for a few more breaths. So the stillness, if you found it challenging, just remember it's a practice. We just want to work our way towards focused attention. So we'll take a few more breaths, just paying attention to this candle. Or if you wanted to close your eyes and sit in centering prayer, just remember the four R's, right? So we resist no thought. They're going to come. Just let them float by like clouds. And then we retain no thought, so just let it go. We react to no thought, so no judgment about it. And then just return your focus. So if it's to the candle or to your breath or to just being fully present. So a few more breaths. And then just gently blink your eyes a few times. Closing your eyes, bring your hands to the center of your heart. Maybe a little bit of pressure, palm to palm. Creating energy, not just for you, but for those in your care. Inhale deeply. Exhale, bow your head to your own heart with a mental pat on the back, showing up so that you can be your best. The spirit in me, honors the spirit in you. Namaste. And finally, even in these times of social distancing, I want to encourage you to continue to give. So whether that's your worshiping congregation or a not-for-profit in your community that's going to help those in need, um, please continue to give. Be well.